Namaskar, Namaskar. Welcome back to another live Thursday evening, 7 p.m. And this is Aditya Soma. I'm a real estate investor and real estate agent here in Windsor, Ontario. So today's topic is how a young professional who wants to get into real estate, what are all the strategies that you can use in order to achieve financial freedom or wealth in life, you know, generational wealth, whatever you're looking for. How can you do that? So that's a question. We're going to discuss about that. And if you're new to this channel, you know, make sure to subscribe, like, and let me know in the comments below what's your name, where you're joining the live from. So that way I know who I'm talking to. And before I get into the topic, I'm just curious to know from you, um, you know, how old are you? And have you bought your first property? And just say, you know, yes, I have a property. Or no, I have a pro. I don't have a property. Let me know in the comments below. And what's your name and age? Again, I'm asking for a reason. So I would love to hear from you, Harji. Thank you. Thirty-one. Um, also, just say in the comments: Do you own a property or you don't? Your age and if you own a property or not. Um, because you know that way. No, no, Shivaram, no, bought my first property at 27. Congratulations. Ravi, not at 29. Gobind, Seth, not at Chantel. Hey, hey Chantel. 20, 31, no property in Canada. Bought our first one. Congratulations, Kavya. What is going on with the EV plant <laughs> and rental licensing? Let's let, we'll talk about that. Uh, we're glad to see a lot of comments coming in. So you know, uh, so let's start with that. You know, because the, one of the I see a lot of comments saying no first property and some have first property. So first we'll talk about the first property and then you know we'll talk about how to get you got your first one, how to get the second one, how to get the third one, and you know from there how to scale. We'll talk about that as well. So in the meanwhile, any questions, you know, like Rakesh was asking, you know, any questions like that, make sure to let me know in the comments below because, you know, the more questions you ask, the more you learn. Worst case scenario, at least you asked, you don't keep that in your mind, someone else can answer. It could be me or someone from the audience, right? So with that, um, let's get into the first property. How to buy your first property, um, especially when you're in 20s or early 30s. Um, you know, made a common question I got. Do I buy my primary home first or do I buy an investment home first? So here's what I would start with. Um, combination of both. There is a strategy called house hacking. That's, that's how I started. So what I mean by that, it's, it's an investment property, but I'm going to live in there. There is a lot of advantages by doing that because it's a primary home. I can buy with 5% or 10% down and I'm going to rent out some of the places, some of the property that I'm living in. So let's take as an example. I bought my first property. Uh, this one is a duplex. So this one had a one bedroom unit and three bedroom unit. So I live in the one bedroom unit. I rented out the three bedroom unit so I can pay most of my expenses. So my living expenses are not changing that much. Um, in, in this market, that's, is that doable? Yes, definitely that is doable. Um, maybe not in every market. So that's when, you know, if you're in a market like Toronto or Vancouver, then maybe you want to consider, you know, looking at different markets. Um, or even in that areas, maybe looking at something that the units, if the units is not possible, maybe looking at uh, multiple bedrooms or having a basement. So you rent out, you know, a couple of bedrooms in your house so you can keep your expenses at low because especially this is very, very important if you want to continue to invest, if you want to build wealth and financial freedom. This uh, first step is very important because I know a lot of people who got their first home as a primary home and with no rental option they just lived in the house, but now their expenses, instead of $2,000 per month or $3,000 per month rent, 
they're paying four five thousand dollars mortgage and if you're working four five thousand dollars it's almost a hundred thousand salary so all your expense all your income at least one person income is going into the house so that means your your leftovers is very less that means getting into the second property becomes challenging um, even from the mortgage side you have a higher debt and qualifying for the second one becomes harder that's why it's starting out and i think that was one of the reason that helped me very quickly to buy my second property or third property because i'm keeping my debts that debt ratio lower because banks look at how much income you make and how much debt you have if you have a car payment if you have a house if you don't have income then the, whatever the mortgage coming in is all your debt the car payments it's your debt so if you're someone have a goal to buy your first property and you know not uh, uh not much of fond of a uh, big cars or you know don't want to uh, you you prefer to have freedom more than the luxury toys then maybe start off with this so that way you will keep your expenses low and income better and um, you know another thing is like how do you qualify for a mortgage right so basically this is where a lot of people get stuck um, oh i'm living in toronto i don't qualify for 800000 home uh, then this is where you're going to question yourself you're going to ask okay what am i doing what's my job what's my salary can i find this job somewhere else or can i get a work from home job and can i move to areas where i can afford the areas which is growing but at the same time i can do a house hack so that's a question that you're going to ask yourself i cannot give a 100% answer there but you know i know i have personally me and my team we helped uh, you know many clients who did that successfully you know they move in here for one year they move back if they want if you if they don't like it here but they move back but because they moved in because they have work from home option they get 5% down option they buy a property for $30,000 $40,000 that's all you need to get started 30 40,000 so if you have a job if you're making 100,000 or family income if you're married you know single also varies right so that is one of the best uh, entry point to start with um, if you haven't done that make sure you know focus on that first um, especially if your goal is to uh, freedom <laughs> your freedom so i i i, I wear this t-shirt to remind myself all the time uh, if, if that's your goal right like again you know I, I understand everyone goals are different but if you're here watching me listening to me that means i'm assuming you have a goal of achieving financial freedom so that's the first step and so far any questions if let me know in the comments below so i'll be taking some questions um, further i continue so I, i'll start with the rakesh question here um what's going on with ev battery plant and rental licensing so let's talk one at a time ev battery plant um i i even just passed by that uh, ev battery plant uh, just like literally one hour ago um they paused the construction um because of you know some fight between the government and the company they were expecting some uh what do you call this grants that government has changed policies or you know, something going on between those two guys so the, the agreement they haven't came to an agreement um on certain grants so once that is cleared probably they'll continue the construction but they have a place they already like i see that uh, steel frames or three levels or four levels there the, the work has been done significant so far you know they bought the land and all but again who knows with these things what is going to happen but here's the thing is battery plant if for some reason the battery plant get cancelled let's talk about the worst case scenarios right always look into the worst case scenarios uh, because you, know, you never know what's going to happen personally whenever i invest i think about the worst case scenario first then you know do the reverse engineering okay what's the best case scenario but first is what's the worst case scenario so now question is if the battery plant cancels is windsor going to be a worse place to invest is windsor going to be a worse place to live so here's my thoughts first of all the battery plant came in like 
two years ago. Even before that, the business started to grow. Even before that, the immigration population started to grow uh, because the universities, college, um, University of Windsor College, our bridge construction, and uh, uh, this how affordable housing, and Detroit, the Michigan growth of automotive industry for electrical vehicles. All those things are contributing for Windsor growth. Um, yes, definitely EV plant played a decent role, but not sole uh, reason because EV plant is bringing in 2000, 2500. So is it going to be impacting on Windsor if that canceled? Maybe, you know, it might not, we might not see that crazy growth that we have seen in last two years. Maybe I should not say last two years because last one year there was a drop before that year. Because, but even before that, the appreciation, the growth in Windsor with a, in terms of population and you know job people moving in with this and that, all those elements were still doing in a good pace. There was still appreciation anywhere from 10 to 25 percent. Of course, we all know COVID time was crazy, but even before COVID, it was at least like 10 percent appreciation. But you know, you as a first-time homeowner, even if you keep that aside. Now, what's the vacancy rate? So as of now, the EV plant has, hasn't started. Still in Windsor, um, the vacancy rate is under 4%. Yes, it's under 4%. That means still there's a lot of renters out there who is looking to, to rent a place. So I personally think EV plant is not going to make a big, you know, make or break or, you know, where you're going to lose your shits. Uh, but of course, you know, if you're trying to buy just because of EV plant, then you know, sorry, we don't have an answer as of now. So that's on the EV plant side. Uh, now coming to the second point, the rental licensing. Second question, what's happening with the rental licensing? Nothing. As of now, city already going ahead with that. So if you have a property in Ward 1 and Ward 2, you have to apply for rental license. You have to go through certain process which is like, you know, getting an electric, uh, electric safety certificate and getting, um, you know, police clearance for everyone who is living there and the owner and the property management um, and applying. Um, and then city will do a building inspection, like, you know, make sure building is up to the code. And if it passes, then you'll get the rental licensing. Uh, approximately every year per unit, $1,000 per year, approximately. And also properties you need to get rental licensing, any properties anywhere from semi-detached, detached townhomes until four units. If it's more than four units, like five, six, seven units, you don't have to get license. But if it's under four units or four, you have to get a license if it's in Ward 1 and Ward 2. So that's the story we're uh, We are trying to fight back. You know, there is a protest going on. Uh, if you have, if you follow on, follow me on Instagram, I have a story on on my uh, screen let me pull it up so to tell you if you're a landlord own a property in this area i want you to see you there uh, it's on 29th monday 3 p.m um you know a lot of people are meeting at the city hall just to protest because you know this is impacting the rental licensing impacting on landlords and also tenants because now you know there are a lot of properties that have a basement that is not legal the heights are like you know low height so which means city eventually if they go through the process if they you know inspect all the properties properly um they might you know end up making them not to use that basement that means the tenants have to leave those basements because now they're not livable if they're under 6.8 feet 6.8 or 6.7 don't quote me on that just check on the city website uh, but it's one of those numbers so whereas a lot of properties in this area are older so that means you know all the tenants who are living in these areas they have to uh, vacate if the you know city gives a work order right so that means there will be more demand in this area because there is already a shortage for students in this area for rental places they're they're moving away from a lot of students living actually three kilometers four kilometers away from university or college um, so that means there's going to be more demand. So if you have a property, good property in the student area, you will have a very high demand. If you have a property that you can get a license, then you'll have a good demand because, you know, now not many people are going through that process yet because they are scared of the basements going, you know, not usable. 
um, or scared of doing some extra work if the city does the inspections, all those things. So it's not good for the tenants. It's not good for the landlords. If you're a tenant or if you're a landlord who don't like this idea, again, you know, we are not opposed to having um, uh, uh, property up to the code. But what they're doing is like, you know, they're even digging into the grandfathering because there is a lot of things that are grandfathering. If they ask for safety features like, you know, fire systems, you know, having smoke detectors, alarms, all those things, those are all fair deal. They, of course, you know, ask for those. The city can randomly check any time, um, any property. They have that right. They can just come and knock the door and inspect the property. But instead, now they're enforcing, which is creating pressure for both landlords and the tenants. So, which is why, like, you know, many, many people are opposed to it. So, if you're one of them, see you at the protest. Okay. So, that's, that's the thing. Um, and if you're a buyer, you're looking to buy in this area, just make sure get an inspection done properly. Make sure you know what you're getting into. Make sure, you know, if you know what you're getting into, and if you still see the potential in the property, why not, right? So just, just making, doing that due diligence, understanding what elements goes into getting a license is the key. Hey, Tanvir, what do you think the housing market going in next four months? buyer market or seller market so um since january since, since january this year we are slowly seeing there is a kind of a um, mix of both there are certain properties that are in a seller market there are certain properties in a buyer market which means you know some properties are getting going into being work you know i was making an offer for a client today for a nice beautiful home in a south windsor they got four offers I offered 40,000 more than the market, more than the uh, listing price and probably 10 or 20,000 more than the market value. We still didn't get it because they got four offers and some of one of them get a, gave a good offer. So, you know, that's those things are happening. What's going to happen in the next four months? Um, personally, like, you know, unless if the Bank of Canada decided to increase the rates, I think market might be steady, not that crazy not that completely in the buyer's hand or not completely in the seller's hand. I think it's going to be a balanced market like we are seeing now. Again, that's just my opinion. So what advice would you give to young university student looking to invest right after graduation? Abdullah, great question. I love that. Um, so here's what my advice. Uh, if you're a young student, first start learning. Because you gotta know what's happening, right? Like you gotta know what's in the market. You gotta know what properties are good, what properties are bad. So what you're doing right now, fantastic. That's one step. And start networking. Um, speaking of which, we have a um, investor, Freedom Investor. If you want free financial freedom, we have the Freedom Investor meetup coming soon um, in June, uh, I believe, 16th. So it's. Mm, but make sure follow me on Instagram. I'll be putting stories probably from starting from tomorrow. It's on event, right? Let me see if it's active. Investor meetup. So I'll make sure to come to the events like this. Meet other investors. Learn from people. You know, get to know. Get to know what's happening uh, in, in the city that you're living, in the city that you want to invest after, um, you know, after your graduation. Freedom investor. So I'm just gonna quickly put that link so if someone wants to join, they can join here. Okay. Yep, so it's on June. 16th and the link is in the chat now so the link in the chat if you're if you want to you know meet people get to know ask their experience you know start learning uh networking uh, is is the second thing i would suggest and the third thing is do whatever it takes to save money save as much money as possible because you know 
in real estate it takes money definitely you need money some kind of money right like either you have access to money or you have money so if you're a young if you're a student you can hustle hard now you can hustle do different jobs if possible get some kind of a jobs in real estate within the real estate field um you know i know a lot of young students like i just hired uh, one uh, just came four months into the city um he was working for a property management company for two months and he got fired and i like the personality i hired as a leasing agent now we have an in-house leasing agent and also like you know i see a lot of other students they're hustling in different ways you know they're they're into cleaning services real estate cleaning services they're into you know leasing properties or they're working with property management companies they're working with contractors doing all the labor work but you're learning working for contractors working for agents as an assistant you know different roles there is different work within the real estate if you want to get into real estate right away after then learn the things because you know if you're new to this country there's so many things you don't know i wish when i started i started i i learned way before that so get into the game and learn that's the third thing fourth thing is if you can you know learn how to find good deals and do wholesaling if you haven't heard of wholesaling so it's just like a real estate agent but without a license but in the wholesaling process it's like you find a seller so that means you go door knock see if anyone uh, wants to sell their home and you learn negotiating skills you negotiate for a good price and sell that contract to a buyer so that means you're just talking to the seller getting an agreement saying that i will buy your property for x amount and with an assignment with where you can sell it to someone and you assign that to you find a buyer so that means technically you got to find the seller you got to find the buyer and you make you know make the transaction happen so that's wholesaling so if you're young learn that that is a great skill because if you learn how to find deals if you learn how to negotiate that's one of the heavy lifting for investing journey so that's another thing and probably you know read books read as many books as possible some of my favorite books like that i started with rich dad put which probably you know most of you know already um investing in rental properties by brandon turner that's another property and uh, go on to bit bigger pockets biggerpockets.com they have a great podcast you know instead of listening to music all the time maybe well, listen to one or two podcasts every day just you know listen to some stories that uh, how people started like you know um go on to their website they have blogs you know some great discussions going on on their website all the time so keep doing that okay mamata hi mamata how are you you're wake up early <laughs> hey nilesh if inspirants like me are interested in being part of win city and work with you what should be our qualification to join you so as of now i'll be honest we are not looking for any specific role um but you know there is always room it depends on what skills you have where you can help us you send out a video talking about yourself what is your skills are where you see i can you know improve maybe come in with a solution send out send me an email i'll send i'll put the email in the in the chat again i might not respond for everyone but if i am impressed with i'll respond so you know don't get mad if someone doesn't respond to you that means you haven't impressed them i have seen you know so many people dm on instagram saying you know hey i need this help i need that help uh, when we don't respond they they start getting angry mad bro that's not going to help you you got to be creative you got to be you know uh, with a mindset that what can i do so that these people can come it's just like in the sales too right we as agents if we get mad if our clients are not writing offer then i'm a bad agent i am disqualified to be an agent rather if we think okay maybe this client is not liking this property 
I'm showing them the wrong property or I'm sure I'm, I, I didn't ask the right questions. I didn't find out more about their business, more about their needs. I didn't find out more about their family requirements. Maybe I didn't find more about their financials. Something I'm doing is not right. Let me change the strategy. Let me try in a different way. Let me see how I can add value for these guys. Let me see how I can find the right, uh, you know, product for their needs. So you gotta change your approach. You gotta add value sometimes even without asking. You gotta impress people in a different ways. You know, this many I have seen many good stories like the real hustlers, people who really make it happen. There's many people, like 80% of the people, they just wish to have make it happen. But there's 20% of the people, they want to make it happen and they do whatever it takes to make it happen. You know, the young guy I was talking about, the one who whom I hired, uh, I posted a video just uh, two days ago or yesterday uh, about an event and he was in that video. I was telling, sharing in that video, um, if you haven't watched, check that video. Like there is a lot of other stories, you know, good stories. Um, so he DM'd me multiple times asking, hey, how can I join your team? How can I join your team? Or how can I connect with you? How can I talk to you? I want to learn from you. So when someone is approaching me, asking my time and my energy without any value, why should I, right? Because we have a limited time. Limited time is the most valuable thing. If I have time, I would go spend time with my baby. If I have time, I'll go either, you know, help the clients that are already working with us. You know, what value are you bringing onto the table? So this guy, I never respond for two, three months. I think he reached out multiple times. Um, then when we posted about this networking event, he comes to the event and he presents himself that, you know, I asked him for some favor. He said, I'll do it without even thinking I'll do it for the time, whatever you're based on your time. And I started to, uh, he started to help me without any money or nothing for one month, for one month. Yes. Um, and then one day the situation arised, I hired him. So the reason I share all this story is you got to think differently. You got to ask different questions. You got to get out of the crowd way of thinking, then get become more creative. And it's not just me. You will find even better mentor than me. Volatility in real estate seems to be drastically drifting in the last couple of years. Should one get into investment property when the market gets stable? at least how it was in Windsor prior to COVID. So, Venkat, um, here's the thing. No one knows how this real estate will turn, um, when it's going to be stable, when it's not going to be stable. So, if you want to wait, you will end up waiting for years. But let's look at the history. So, Windsor was stable from 2009 till 2014. From 2014, it was steadily growing because there is multiple reasons. One of the biggest reasons is inflation. Everything is going up. Labor cost, material cost, the construction cost, you know, all in all, everything gone up. And along the way, because real estate is also a product, you know, that also went up. And we all know if you look at you know, completely zoom out and look at the last 20 years data, 30 years data, 40 years data, 50 years data. In general, the real estate prices has been going up. Not only here, most of the countries where there is a population growth happening, right? So that's the bigger picture. And where you buy in is a short term thing. You can, if you time the market, you would save 10% or 15% or 20% if you time the market. But if you cannot time the market, can you cannot make the returns? Question mark. You think you cannot make the returns? I got in in 2018, so, sorry, 17. The market started going up in 14. I still made my money along the way. I got my one of the biggest investment on March 1st. 2022, when the market was peak, since then the market dropped almost 30%, and then there is an increase of uh, probably 5 to 10% now. So that means there's still 20% drop. 
So did I lose money on that deal? How many would say I lost money on that deal? It's one of the biggest investment. I, I will pause for a second here before I answer this. How many of you think from the story I just shared, my own deal, and it's a real deal that's going on right now. I bought the property on March 1st, 2022 for almost a million dollars. And the market has dropped by almost 20% since then. How many of you would say I lost money on this deal? Just say yes or no. I'm not going to continue if you don't say yes or no. Because I want to share, I want to see how many uh, understand the story. How, um, you know, maybe if you didn't understand my question, I'm going to repeat again. How many of you think that I lost money on this deal because I bought it uh, in March 2020? Um, and now market has dropped 20%. Oh wow, many people say no. Interesting. Did, does anyone say yes? Did I lose money? Okay, it looks like no one, no one says yes. So good, I'm glad um, to see that people are understanding. But why? why? Why I didn't lose money? So think about it. Let me explain. Because if you sell, you might lose. Yes, exactly. I haven't sold the property, right? If I sell, I lost. Yes, on the papers, my property value gone down. If I sell today, yes, exactly, right? If I sell today, I lost. So here's the cool kicker. This property, actually, even on the papers, I did not lose money. And here is how. I didn't buy a random property. I, I didn't buy a turnkey property. I bought a property that, need, that have some creative ways of increasing property value. The creative ways is I'm severing the lot and I'm rezoning that lot. I'm severing a lot and I'm rezoning it. Once that rezoning is done, I will get extra two to 300,000 from that lot alone. So, so the market was dropped, right? I could not time the market. I could not buy at the bottom, but I bought at the top. I put in a lot of money, but because I'm not selling and I know even when I bought it, there was already slowly talks were going on now that, you know, there was something might happening in the market, right? But if you are in a position to hold on to the property, no matter what happens in the short period, I'll repeat again. If you are in a position to hold on to a property, no matter what happens to the property, to property value in a short period, then your investment is safe because you're not going to sell it. And I'm not going to sell this property. I'm doing some improvements. And anyways, my improvements will take one, two, three years. The rezoning will take at least one and a year. So I'm going to go through the property process. So that process is going on. I improved three of the units rented for the market rents. I'm improving the other three units and I'm going to move into one of the unit. So it will pay for my building, I'll be off having my office for free. And once my rezoning is done, I'm gonna take my investment back. So now my investment becomes from the worst one, losing money on the paper to a good one. So the story is hard to time the market, really hard. Like unless you're a really data nerd, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm a dumb investor, honestly, like, I don't know too much about the economics. That's why I never talk that much on the economies or, you know, all this data. That's not my thing. I'm, I'm a very, very, very um, uh, basic, simple knowledge guy. I don't have uh, really some magic uh, uh, experience or knowledge. All I have is basic knowledge. Someone need a roof under their head. And with the amount of people coming into Canada, with the amount of growth happening in Windsor or any across any area. Like uh, again, I'm not talking about just Windsor, right? Anywhere, anywhere you're investing, whichever the area that you're investing. The people are, there is population growth is happening. In the long run, the renters are going up. The homeowners are going down. The people are, will need affordable home, a rental place for 12, 15, $1,600 or thousand, two thousand $2,000. There, people have to live. People have to rent. 
So that is is the basic uh, idea I have. That's why I'm investing in those type of properties where I can just buy. If I can do some improvements, fantastic. If I can just hold on to them, rent them. If the market appreciates, if I love to keep that building, maybe refinance and buy another one or just keep holding on to it, pay the mortgage down because I know there is one thing in, in, in real estate guaranteed. If I hold that property for 20 years or 30 years, let's say 30 years, for 30 years, yes, I'm 30 now, for next 30 years, it's, it seems a long time, but by then my baby Ahilia will be 30 years only. So she, if I just gift her that building, at that time it will be free and clear and it has six units. So the six units will pay at least $10,000. If I can keep up, just I all I need to do is make sure keep up the building, keep the structure uh, solid, keep uh, you know the roof proper, make sure the sort of furnace is taken care, make sure the AC is taken care. If I do all the things right, it will be in a good condition. And if I just give that, I gave her a financial freedom just from one property. Think about it. It's it's a little crazy. Like when I started to understand this concept. That's when I started to get more excited about these numbers because just one property. And if I build that lot, I'm telling, if I build a 20 unit, you know, or a 10 unit building, a brand new, you know, yes, it's gonna cost time, money, resources. But if I can, let's say if I build it for next 30 years and I give that one to my daughter, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? She's gonna have a free and freaking clear building, 30 years old that she's gonna enjoy the fruits of it for next 20, 30 years to come, right? You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. So that's, 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 uh, that's what I'm in it for. I'm in for long run. Um, and if the market is in a favorable, I, I might sell some properties when the market is in good condition, I'll try to be in a good position. You know, this is where active income is important. This is where make sure, you know, you are, you have good income coming in from different sources this is where you have to make sure you're not you know spender you're not spending on luxury items until you have certain a good position on the uh, income side on the cash flow side if you're on close work permit can you join win city or should we wait for PR? doesn't matter whether you're on work permit study permits what matters is what value can you bring on to win city if there is something that you have valuable to offer for win city win city might take on so please look from that terms shivaram have you considered investing in land in canada instead of purchasing a house for long-term returns i'm curious to know how land investments work in canada uh shivaram yes i definitely thought about it i do have a plans you know i do have land actually lots but not the residential like a bigger acreage land um i haven't got into it yet I, that's in my bucket list i will be getting into land developments for sure um but maybe not i'm not ready yet because land is something you need a good amount of deep knowledge and deep pockets at least that's my understanding maybe money either deep pockets or access to deep pocketed people. So land deals, uh, one of the reason I haven't got in right as of now, because land deals will take time and they're expensive. Usually, you know, starts with at least a million, can go up to five, six, 10 million. And on top of it, they don't produce any income. So that means most of the land owners the people buy land deals they put anywhere from 30 to 50 or even 100 percent down they pay cash a lot of them because there is no income from there only expenses until you develop the land until you make it a sellable land or until you build on it until then there is no income from it unless you're creative you form some kind of you know i had a i don't know if you guys any anyone saw my story today i just uh I uh, had a very good time uh, enjoying the drive ride uh, on a Lambo. Uh, I have a good friend here in Windsor. Uh, his name is Dan Crosby. Uh, he owns the Canadian Protein. 
uh, his, his Instagram profile is a uh, Lambert Lab Dog. I uh, love this guy, he's a, a very hustler. So he gave me a ride, we were like driving for like one hour around the city and just talking about, you know, different things. And um, uh, he, he was telling that, you know, one of his strategy of investments is he buy an industrial property that has two, three, four acres in the residential area. That's like smart strategy. But how much would it cost to get something like that? It's a good amount of money. Two acres, three acres industrial land, usually two, three, four million. The down payment itself is like good amount. I don't have that much fun yet. So uh, deep pocket, deep knowledge, or access to deep, deep money. Because holding costs, the returns are um, hard to calculate. And it's usually there's so much uh, efforts involved in it. So that's why I haven't got it. Uh, but land's great investment, just not for the beginner. If you're a young professional, you're just starting out, maybe not for you. But again, who knows? If you're someone really smart, have a good knowledge, you convince your parents or friends or family, someone you know have deep pockets, to buy, you become a small active partner, 20% share is also enough to make a great flip. So that's another on the idea side. Sarvesh, hey buddy, good to see you. I'm doing fantastic buddy. So if you don't have a PR, you have to pay 25% tax in Ontario, correct. In the meantime, would you suggest to buy first property in Calgary with 5% down positive cash flow property? Yes, why not? Why not? I, buy, I bought a property in Calgary because I see there might be some potential for growth. Why not? Uh, also, that's for sure. I, I, again, look into all the details, make sure check with the lawyers, you know, know the things and make sure you get the property uh, mortgage because if you're living in Ontario, you have to show the work from home option, you're moving in this and that. You have to have a proper story for it so that you get the mortgage. So if you can, hey, why, why to wait, learn, with the money that you already have and uh here's the, going back to our you know, young professional strategies another strategy uh, probably this is more applicable for people like you know who are close to get their pr or who don't have enough money saved up maybe getting into pre-construction investment pre-construction is a great investment not everything some of them because even in pre-construction, I have seen people buy, you know, you have seen those uh, uh, articles. Uh, Uber driver bought a $2 million pre-construction, now burned down. $2 million. That is not an investment because if you buy a $2 million property, how much are you going to rent it for if you're renting? That means it's going to be for yourself. Or you're just uh, speculating that if $2 million becomes 2.5, I will sell a sign and I'll just make that half a million. And this is where it gets, you know, that is where you burn out because you don't have, if you don't have enough down payment to buy it, if you don't have enough qualification to buy that 2 million when the market goes down, that's the speculation, that kind of investments I avoid. But if you're looking at a pre-construction, there are a lot of good pre-constructions like condos, you know, I bought a condo in Burlington like one year ago or one and a half year ago. The closing is in 2026 or 2027. I don't remember exactly now from one of the good reputable builder for thousand dollars per square feet, uh, for a 600, 650 square feet, two bedroom, two bedroom or one plus then something, um, for six fifty thousand, still haven't closed. I'm paying in phases deposit, so slowly I'm accumulating money for that property. The same thing at a condo in Calgary. I did the same thing. Again, I look for good locations when I'm doing pre-construction. So if you make sure you look for a good products like solid reputable builder is very very important and solid location the location that has you know all the fundamentals is very important because these two are very very important and if you're starting with some money then that's a good place because now you don't have to qualify for a mortgage until you close the property but don't one thing i give a heads up is like don't um buy this kind of pre-constructions just assuming that it will go up in price i will just assign because there are many people who burn down. If something goes wrong with the market at the time of closing, you will be effed up. Yes. So better just be careful on that part. 
other than that like if you study well about the preconstructions preconstruction is also a great way to start what is ongoing cap rate in Windsor um, I don't know what you mean by ongoing cap rate but the cap rate or oh, the currently going on cap rate um, so for commercials uh, it depends on if the property is like very old um, in a rough condition maybe six percent um, that's like maybe in, in that range uh, if it's a nice solid good building probably four percent four point five if you're lucky five percent and we have actually a fiveplex off-market sale if someone is interested dm us fiveplex dm me on instagram fiveplex and also another fourplex coming up soon um fourplex fiveplex is for 950 at a cap rate of 5.5 um turnkey investments or four units were updated uh recently rented out for new rents um there's some room to increase another thousand dollars because one of the tenant is still old and open for some cash for key so something like that and also we have two duplexes one just hit the market today if someone looking for a house hacking um we have a duplex that is like you know two bedroom and three bedroom side by side um just for a uh, 500 000, oh, sorry 500 000 was off market now we listed for uh 300 and uh i don't remember the price but uh dm me duplex we can we can send you all the details uh, which you can get you know from price point of view you'll get around for, uh, under give or take 500. hey angie how are you i'm doing fantastic buddy depends on the purpose of the purchase yes exactly so probably i'm i'm guessing you're referring to the previous discussion Eventually, if you grow, yes, this is all the previous ones. Where do you get so much cash or hold or for construction period? So there is multiple ways you can get your cash. One, you work your ass off, do any business, sales, or job, you make money. That's where you get cash. Two, you bought your first house two years ago, three years ago, you have equity. You can refinance and take that cash. You have multiple properties, then you can take the cash. So this is the, another strategy adding on to that young professionals, how to buy your second property is the primary home that you bought. If you bought a property and you be patient for one, two, three years, do some cosmetic updates if it needed and refinance the property one, two years down the road and save this is one thing i would emphasize like i was frugal even now i'm not i'm not spending too much you know many people ask me I, I, one of my good friend like he's been after me like to buy a sports car i'm like no i don't need it i bought tesla just because i need suv for sure and tesla offering a lot of tax write-off this and that and it almost at the price that you know a regular car a regular suv was costing me around the same and and it's on the business so i can write up that too um, and my house still i'm living in a three hundred thousand that i bought like four or five years ago i'm not increasing my debts so that way i'm saving more money so save more money and wait or do side gigs do take up any sales or take up any business uh, you know buy a business if needed whatever it takes i don't know what you're good at right whatever your skills are there's a lot of uh, sidekicks you can do a lot of freelancing you can do to make extra money do that save up for the second property and after one two years after you buy your first one now you have equity in the property go refinance or if you have to sell the first property now you get equity you take money buy two properties yes i have done that like when i sold my first property i got two properties with that money so you can get the money from there or if you this two didn't work out you can get private money um, personally I, I like to go for private money only when i know that deal is really good so if i'm doing any flips like recently i just bought a flip if you're following me on instagram probably you get those kind of stories uh, I, I just got a flip and I'm doing a actually full video. I'm going to show that flip video, like literally from the point of how I bought the property 
two after I sell whatever the numbers I made, I'm going to show you guys how much I made and all. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, so for that flip, what I did, I completely raised money from my network. I got the money completely. Literally, I just texted some of the people I know. Uh, in fact, I only texted one person first. Just in 10 minutes, he said, yes, I'm, I'm done. I'm down for it. Um, maybe, you know, that that's not that easy for you when you're starting off. But, you know, I've been in this game for the last five, six years. I'm consistently showing up. I'm committed to this. I'm, you know, people know, at least some handful of people know me that I'm very serious about this business. And I do, I, I understand what I'm doing. So when you do the same thing, when you build your reputation, people will give you money. You pay them good interest. I pay 12%, 13% uh, on a private money for two, three, four months. Um, once I'm done with the project, I give them back, do another one. That's where you can get the money. And if that doesn't work, there are a lot of other companies, they private money, they charge a little bit more interest. Would you talk a little bit more about rezoning, please? Sure, digital artist, I love that name. So the lot, probably, you know, you're asking about the lot um, that I have. So. The property I bought, I have a video actually on this one, um, Office Hack, that's the title on that video. So I have this building and that has a, a L shape, the lot in the back that is leading on the other street. So this lot currently zoned for RD 2.2. So in Windsor, RD 2.2 allows for four units. So now I'm applying for the city saying that I can fit another extra eight units in this lot because we are going through this you know less inventory situation i'm offering to add eight more units to the city so i had a planner i had an architect and they both are working together and they're preparing the whole statement and this and that all the showing all the parkings meeting all the requirements except you know the zoning is different so for that we have to change the zoning because current zoning that whatever the zoning that every property has a zoning uh, you know code zoning um, number so that doesn't allow for 12 units doesn't allow for 10 units it only allows for maximum four units so now i'm asking for city to do an amendment of rezone change from residential four units to residential 12 units so we'll see you might be able to get it you might not be able to get it. again this is where the risk you have to take you have to do the calculations no one even city they won't give you a hundred percent answer we did a initial consultation while ago almost four five months ago this they looked at it they didn't raise any concerns they said send us this 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 all these documents then we'll give you we'll look into we'll like process the application so that's the Is it easy to renew mortgage on your investment property? It depends on way, how is your finances. It depends on how much is your debts. This is where, again, I go back to the point where keeping down your debts, increasing your income is very, very important. If you're someone aspiring to buy more properties, at least until you accumulate a solid equity, three, four, five million dollar equity, don't get into unnecessary debts don't get into unnecessary debts don't decrease your don't increase your debts and try as much as possible to increase your income at least for five to ten years of your engaged 20s 30s dedicate for increasing your income why am i active in sales because i want to increase my active income so that i can you know pay off some of my investments or buy some you know more solid assets so that's something you gotta do if you decrease your debts increase your income the renewal process will be easy because the banks can clearly see you know how to manage your properties how to manage your income when you're refinishing the property you're adding up your profit value so although you sell it your profit might be less but you will not end up losing Yes, exactly. So Nilesh is referring to the old deal. 
vision ready warning dumb question buddy no question is a dumb question you know don't even think that do you perform housewarming party for every property you own before you rent it out <laughs> i love the question i didn't even do the housewarming party for my own house that i live in so i don't believe in those you know i believe in a uh, uh, making sure good fundamentals the property is structurally good good location uh, rentable area that's more important for me than the house buying party or east facing west facing all those things i respect the rituals but uh, you know i don't believe in them amrit pal can we buy real estate with none of our own money yes 100% i just gave an example the flip i'm talking about i did for multiple properties like that but in order to do none of your money you got to you know build your reputation or you might have equity from other properties that is also not your money you know i was talking to a young couple recently they own a property for last 4 years and their property mortgage is like 200000 and their current prop the property current value is 500000 so they have 300000 equity and they are asking me i want to buy a property multi family with not my money because they learned somewhere in a course they want to buy with none of their money and they were looking for this jv partners or private money they are ready to pay like 12% or vtb you know even for the seller take back 4% 6% 7% whatever they were ready to do all those things then i question like look you have equity here literally you can take another 200000 out that is also not your money it's a bank's money you are borrowing money from there and for lower interest 4% or something that is still someone else money you borrow that and you use that money to buy another investment that is still someone else money i mean you own the property but it's you didn't earn it your property owned it you you're taking loan against the property even if you take a private money they also ask for lien on different properties they also ask for blanket mortgages so different things no one is going to lend money without either you have a solid reputation or without having uh, lien on some properties to show that you have enough equity right so those are the ways patak hey patak uh, i have been following you since a very long time i love the way you're doing here right now really intrigued with the tips and insights you're sharing thank you brother thank you for the love guys if you love the video so far if you love the, the, the uh, you know live like this you know make sure to hit that thumbs up button that helps to you know boost my confidence to give more content and also you know i've been lately uh, trying to get back to youtube content like the regular content that i used to do uh, i know i kind of paused for last few months because i felt like i ran out of ideas so share me dm me or in the comments let me know what you would like to know what you want me to make videos on what do you like most of you know out of my videos what are your favorite ones type of favorite ones that you want to see more of those let me know in the comments below so that way i can keep going on this youtube journey because this is something i really genuinely you know that um, gives me satisfaction because you know no much no matter how much you make is not what matters how much satisfied you are with your life you know how much happy you are today is what matters and for me what makes me happy is like one of course earning you know helping a lot of clients making good money i'm i'm I, i'm happy with that too but along the way sharing what i love you know sh- sharing you know what i can what i what i experience it what i'm experiencing you know what my experience is or uh, what kind of you know strategies i learn what kind of things this things because you know i get dms at least one a dm a day from someone saying that bro something you said in this video inspired me to do this that's all it's it's little step for your journey but i'm part of that reason that makes me happy that that satisfies me so thank you for acknowledging it and guys i see that it's already like 8 so i'm going to answer one or two questions more um, and also just don't forget we have a uh, different uh, properties on the market we have some properties coming up like fourplex fiveplex duplexes um 
and see some nice single family homes in South Windsor. Um, if you would like to know those deals before hit the market, um, or if you need any help in Windsor, you know, my team, I have a like hustlers now in my team. They're really like uh, working very hard to help our clients with their whole heart. Um, and with my, of course, you know, with my knowledge, connections and the support uh, in the behind. So any help, don't hesitate to reach out to me, DM me on Instagram, and you know, we can see how, how we can help you um, buy, sell, invest, anything. Don't hesitate. Aisha, uh, thinking of getting a rental license, a real estate license, work history, working with Scotia Bank as a financial advisor, did flip once in 2022, have my own house and on work permit, but I'm afraid that competition views. So Aisha, competition is real. There is hundreds or thousands of realtors. You know, a lot of my clients turned into realtors. A lot of my followers turned into realtors because they saw that, you know, they can do it. But here's the reality. Out of 1,000 agents, only 100 agents are going to survive after one year. Only 10% or less every year makes better living in real estate. And what's the difference between this 90% and that 10%? This 90% are not afraid to go talk to people. This nine, this 10 person, sorry, not the 90 person. This 10 person are not afraid to go talk to people. These 10 person are not afraid to market themselves everywhere possible in a creative way, in a dumb way, any way. They're trying always different strategies. These 10 person are hustlers. This 10 person are always there. These 10 persons are always learning. This 10 person are always networking. This 10 person are actually caring about their clients. They are actually working for their clients. They're, if they get one client, they don't look at it as, oh, I only have one client. They look at it as, I got this one client. If I do a best job for this client, this client gonna refer me two, three, four, five, six, ten 10 in next five, 10 years going forward. So they are the one who succeed in the business, in the sales, Yes, competition now, everywhere, anywhere, especially in the sales, real estate. Yes, there is a lot of competition. But if you're that 90 person, don't get it. You're just wasting your time and energy money. But if you think you're in, doesn't matter what your qualifications are. It doesn't matter what you did in financial advisor. Doesn't matter what you did in flip. Doesn't matter you know you own a house or not. If you're in this 10 percent, if you're a hustler, you do. You know, I shared so many videos about what I've been doing. If you're willing to try, see if it works out for you. Try once, try second, try twice. You know, keep going, keep going even when you get more. Keep going, keep trying to find new ways. Keep, you know, trying to learn and do your best. You will, you will get ahead of life. But if you're not that person, then don't get it. I know it's not a short answer. I know it's not a straight answer because I cannot give a straight answer because I don't know you. And, and only even, you know, even your close people cannot tell if you would succeed or not. Only you can decide that. Only your actions can decide that. Adnan. Hi, Adnan. I'm doing fantastic. How are you? If I buy a house in Canada, will it help me PR? Unfortunately, as far as I know, it doesn't. I'm an international student on study permit. Is there any way I can do in real estate? I, I think you you know I shared a lot of things in this before, so please go rewatch. Sorry, because it's already time up. I'm not gonna repeat those, but please rewatch. Thank you so much for a very informative session, Aditya. One more question: Is investing in very old building old, good or bad? because the equipments will be quite old and renovations are costly. So if you do it due diligently, it's a great investment. All my properties, except my pre-constructions, rest of them are 50 or plus years old. My first property, 120 years old, made me $70,000. So you learn what is good about old properties, what are bad about, what kind of things to look out for when you're buying old property, what to need to be inspected, what how you need to be prepared for what is coming up next. You do all those due diligence, old is gold. 
old is gold because old you can negotiate prices or with problems you can get better prices right there's a lot of things old you can improve you can increase the property values mm -hmm. living in primary home for the last two years have built equity but also have funds available do you suggest refinancing only or refinancing plus cash to buy a bigger deal this is the first investment so this is where it depends on your appetite how, how risk you can take if you're if you don't want to take a bigger risk especially if it's your first home keep the cash start with small start small one at a time buy a say of duplex buy a triplex buy a fourplex one prop small property one at a time or a single family start with small and go big okay so i see more questions what are your biggest mistakes in real estate jazz um you know it's already 808 it's time for me to hit the gym but uh that's the coming up topic actually in the next live so we'll be covering into more of those um sorry if i did not get to any of the questions but feel free to leave them in the comments i'm gonna make a note and we'll try to answer in the next live or make a video of it so with that guys thank you so much for joining me live it's a pleasure always you know the time just flies you know without knowingly this is just you know the lives are something that i enjoy a lot because a lot of people who don't know where to go they have so many questions to answer there's so many questions in the mind that they don't have answers for then this life is for them so make sure to join me every thursday live and ask me more questions so until then see you in the next live take care have a good night guys